Hey everyone, it's the Daily Schmooze, and it is Wednesday, hump day, July 19th. Uh, the renovations are going well. Uh, I still haven't gotten hurt, and I'm staying out of the way, but the kitchen is progressing, and I'll keep you up to date, because I know you really want to know this crap. Um, today is July 19th, and it is National Hot Dog Day. So have yourself a wiener. Um, I, I, you know what? I love hot dogs. I, I have always been a hot dog guy. I'm not so my hamburgers are okay. I'll have one, but hot dog, me and hot dogs go together since I was a kid. Um, what, what do you like on your hot dog? I'm just a mustard guy. I, uh, just mustard. That's it. Forget all the other crap. Uh, maybe, you know, one out of 10 hot to hot dogs or maybe a little sauerkraut on that. Uh, maybe that's disgusting to some people. But um, just a regular mustard, uh, sometimes brown mustard. Not very often, though. I don't like the spiciness of it. Just the plain, plain mustard. Slather it all over the dog, and it's good. Now, you know, it seems like every part of the country, we live in such a big country, and it's very wide and diverse. There's different different uh, hot dogs. And so uh, uh, Chicago dog, New York dog, you know, uh, you could get a lot of different dogs. I, I'm sorry. I don't like the hot dog piled up with all kinds of crap. I don't like that. You know, you got to it's the onions and cheese and uh, tomatoes ooh, and uh, all kinds of stuff on the, on top of the hot dog, as well as your mustard, your ketchup and uh, relish and sauerkraut. Uh, some people just pile it on to the point where you can't even see the friggin' hot dog. You know, you can't taste it. All you're tasting is all the condiments. You know, that's stupid. Don't do not do that. Don't do not do that. Do like I do. Just put a little mustard on it there. Some people put ketchup on. I'm not a big hot dog and ketchup guy. But if you would, it gets up so okay. Put a little ketchup on and you're good to go. Maybe a little chopped onions is okay. Um... But uh, don't put all that crap on there. You lose the taste of the hot dog. And, you know, everything in moderation. If you have one or two dogs at a time, that's good. But don't be like that pig Joey Chestnut who eats like 72 hot dogs at one in 10 minutes. He's just shoving them in his mouth there. And he's drinking wood. Ah, yeah. And they call that a sport. That's no sport. And it's on ESPN. I don't get it. Ugh. ESPN must be hurting pretty bad these days. Well, you know, every 4th of July, it's a tradition. From Coney Island, New York, they have the National Hot Dog Eating Contest. And this guy, Joey Chestnut, wins most of the time. Um, <clears throat> me, I like to take my time eating a hot dog. One at a time, not ten at a time. I just take my time and savor it. And it goes without saying, I would not be good in the National Hot Dog Eating Contest. That's not, that's not good. But, you know, speaking of which, this ties in with hot dogs. A um, hundred years ago today, today, this very day, July 19th, The Phillies, as you can see, I'm all fillied up there, geared up, because the Phillies have been winning lately, so I'm all geared up. Um, the Phillies played the Chicago Cubs in Philadelphia. Now, the reason I uh, mention that is because 100 years ago today, the Phillies arrested a 10-year-old kid. I mean, I, I knew that Philadelphia is a tough city. 
when we have a tough fans, but I never knew it got that bad. But back in the day, they'll get this. When you hit a foul ball, you weren't allowed to keep the foul ball. You had to th throw it back on the field. I don't know what they did. I don't know if anybody out there knows. Was it just the Phillies or did every team 100 years ago have that policy that if you caught a foul ball or if a foul ball went into the stand, you had to return the ball? Well, apparently that did happen in Philadelphia 100 years ago today. Uh, the ten uh, the ten year old kid was named about it here, Robert Cotter. Like welcome, welcome back, Cotter. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Ari. Right. Robert Cotter caught the foul ball. Ten years old, ten years old, and the Phillies on the on his way out of the stadium after the game was over arrested the kid. At the gate, they actually arrested the kid. They took him. I can't believe this story. And they took him in front of a judge, and the judge said, "To, to paraphrase, nah, nah, I can't charge the kid with larceny. I can't, I can't do that." He said, uh, "It's a, it's every kid's dream." I was a kid once, he said, "And it's every kid's dream to catch a foul ball." Of the how he said it was, uh, he was very poetic. Uh, a hot liner off the hot bat of a major league player, and uh, he said, "I can't, uh, I can't fault the kid. Case dismissed. Case, dismissed. don't waste my time." So uh, I guess I don't know. They ended up changing their policy, and they decided not to arrest kids anymore. For catching foul balls. How stupid was that, Dad? Huh? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We, th we think we're living in crazy times now. Oh, by the way, the judge's name was Char Charles Brown. Charlie Brown. Oh, Charlie Brown. Maybe that's why the uh, Peanuts, you know, the kid was named Charlie Brown. I don't know. But uh, wasn't that stupid, though, to arrest kids? I, I I can't even see an, an adult being arrested for catching a foul ball, let alone a little kid. I tell you what, the Philadelphia crowd, it's, we don't throw s snowballs at Santa Claus anymore. That's an old, tired, worn out thing. It happened one time back in the late 60s at an Eagles game on Christmas Day around Christmas. And it wasn't even that bad. I did it. Did it hurt Santa Claus? I mean, what the hell? Santa Claus is used to the snow. Anyway, anytime you get a, a ruckus, they go they bring up that old Santa Claus gets pelted by snowball story, which is it is it that's outdated. So I mean, don't even pay attention to that. And I hate to bring this up about Philadelphia police arresting a kid for catching a foul ball is going to bring back bad memories. Anyway, let's talk about something more pleasant, okay? Uh, you know, yesterday I, we, I talked about the uh, people in Wisconsin who uh, got stuck on a roller coaster out there. They were stuck hanging upside down for three hours. And... Uh, before they rescued these people. And uh, it just got me to thinking, you know, uh, I got stuck in, in, in an elevator uh, more than one time. Uh, you know, when you use elevators as much as I do, because, of course, I can't use the steps, uh, you're bound to get stuck. I mean, it's uh, it's it's just uh, the process of uh, elimination that sooner or later, you're going to get stuck in an elevator. So I got stuck many times uh, at work in elevators. And it never really, uh, I can't say it didn't bother me because it did. But I just didn't panic about it. You know, I just kind of kept cool. I mean, I, there were times I got stuck by myself. And there were times I was with other people. 
and I'm trying to calm them down. Don't don't panic. Don't go crazy on me here. Uh, you know, chances are you'll be able to climb up the hill. Now I didn't say that, but it is kind of frightening when you, they try to open the door and you see the the shaft in front of you. It's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. Uh, the uh, shaft. The, they, they're giving you the shaft. Did you ever hear that term? Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I got stuck a few times. I'll tell you where the craziest elevator I ever got stuck in. I was with my mom and my Uncle Henry and Aunt Sue. We were visiting Atlantic City in the early 80s. I got stuck in Donald Trump's elevator. Can you believe it? Uh, we visited the Trump Marina, one of his casinos back in the early 80s. This was before we knew what we knew about Trump, but I don't get into politics or anything like that. Anyway, we got it. We went to see, I think the, the joint was only open for maybe a week or so. So we decided to go down and check it out. Before we even got to the casino or the restaurant, or wherever we were going to go, we got stuck in the elevator. And we were, we were in the elevator a good hour, a good hour. Well, it wasn't a good hour. It was, it was an anxious hour, but you know what I'm trying to say. We didn't panic. I mean, we were just like, all right, get us the hell out of here. And we're using the little phone in there. Hello? We're talking to the front desk. And we're saying, uh, she's saying, can we help you? And we're saying, uh, we're stuck in your elevator. And she said, what room did you say? And it's like, we're not talking about a room. We got stuck and we're here in the elevator. Oh, which elevator are you in? We don't know. We're stuck in your elevator. It's in your building. Did you say you want room service? And this went on and on and on for like uh, 20 minutes until we finally got to this lady and said, no, we are stuck in your elevator. Help. So, you know, they finally got us some help. I did, there wasn't a fire uh, person there or anything. They just got us. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, when the door opened, I don't know, we expected there to be like TV cameras and lights and but there was nothing, nothing. There was only uh, uh, these uh, uh, Trump guys, whatever you call them, hotel employees or whatever, casino guys, standing there and said, are you okay? Are you okay? We kind of expected after being in their lousy elevator for a lousy hour, we, you know, we kind of expected to be comped, maybe uh, give us like a million dollars, we're not going to sue your ass, but we're going to, you know, maybe a nice little dinner or something, you know? Maybe like at the buffet. You know what I mean? Instead, they did offer us a drink, uh, water, water, and uh, that was about it. So, uh, you know, I don't want to call them cheap, but you would think after being stuck in the elevator for an hour and not threatening the sue. And you, that they would have been a little bit more nicer, you know, and said, yeah, you could have dinner on Donald Trump and just bill up the Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they would sign this paper saying you're not going to sue our ass. And that's it. You know, forget about the whole thing. But they didn't. And we didn't take legal action because, thank God, we weren't hurt. We were all fine. It was just scary, though. You're in an elevator. You just don't know what's going to happen, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> but thank God we were all fine. And that was the end of that. So, hey, I got a nice story for you here. Let's have a nice story. We've had bad stories. And we've talked about weird stuff yesterday. I don't know if you were watching yesterday's program. But we were watching, we were talking about this uh, lady in England who got divorced to her husband, who happens to be a ghost. Well, anyway, 
let's uh, talk about something nice for a change. And uh, the headline of this story is, uh, Teacher Donates Kidney to Student. Now, this all is going down in uh, Toledo, Ohio. And uh, this kid, his name is Roman McCormick. Roman McCormick, he's a high school kid. And uh, he's got a kidney problem. And they call it B-O-R, Bohr Syndrome. The Bohr, B-O-R, is is a acronym for, a, for, I can't even pronounce the damn thing, but it's a kidney sy syndrome thing. It's a genetic disorder. And uh, apparently his father has has it, but never knew it. Uh, and the kid started getting sick. And his kidneys, poor guy, his kidneys started sh shutting down. So they did a lot of uh, tests and they found out he was in the stage four uh, of kidney failure. And they said uh, he was either going to have to go on dialysis pretty soon uh, or, you know, we're going to look for a, for another kidney for this guy. Um, so what happened was uh, they they said they'd like to get a live donor rather than uh, someone who has deceased. Oh, they, they, you, you could use the kidney, but a live kidney uh, lasts longer. So they put the word out on local uh, Toledo uh, television stations, newspapers, saying that uh, Roman needed a kidney. So what happens was <clears throat> one of his teachers at the high school, his math teacher, the same guy who uh, taught him geometry last year in high school. He heard about the story, but he didn't really pay too much attention to it. He heard, oh, this kid, local kid, looking for a kidney, please help. But he didn't really uh, do anything about it. The teacher's name is Eddie McCarthy. And so uh, somebody pointed out to Eddie that, hey, isn't that one of your students? And uh, the teacher said, yeah, 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 that's, uh, that's Roman. I remember him. He was in my geometry class last year. So you know how when um, you have this little voice inside telling you to do stuff, I've had that happen to me many, many times. And you know, they say, always listen to this little voice inside. It's your conscious or something telling you to uh, to do stuff. So uh, this guy, the teacher, had he just, he couldn't forget about the story. So uh, he said, oh, what the hell? I'm going to go get tested. Just, just for kicks. I'm just going to go get tested and, and see if I'm a match. Just out of curiosity. So we did. He went and got tested. And it turned out he was the perfect uh, blood type, type O uh, to Rogan. And everything else matched. And here, the, you know, Rogan and his family have been looking for two years for a kidney, two years. And meanwhile, Robin was on dialysis. He was getting worse and worse. Finally, the teacher, his math teacher, stepped up to the plate and decided to donate his kidney to Robin. And isn't it a great thing that we have two kidneys? You know, uh, we could survive on one kidney. Why we have two where we could survive on one? God only knows. But the good thing was that uh, the teacher matched. And today, can you get the, believe this, today, July 19th, maybe as I speak right now, maybe as you watch this program, uh, they are doing the switch. They are uh, 
having surgery and uh, Mr. McCarthy is giving one of his kidneys to uh, his student Roman. So uh, I think it's a great story. I mean, it just proves to you that there are still nice people around in the world, you know? And needless to say, um, Roman and his family are just overwhelmed with uh, happiness and gratitude and appreciation that somebody helped out. And uh, who 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 would have thought, right? It was the math teacher who uh, who was nice enough to give his kidney. So I think that's a nice story. So uh, oh, now one more thing to tell you. Now, you know, yesterday we were talking about global warming. And I, I believe it, and I think it's true. I mean, look at there's proof. Mother Nature herself is giving you the proof. For the people who don't believe in it, look at what's going on in the world. I mean, out west, they're breaking all kinds of high temperatures. Phoenix, Arizona, 113, Las Vegas. Texas has been in the hundreds for weeks. I mean, even, even in Europe, uh, Rome, Italy, 110, and uh, the low, the low temperature in Rome only got, in, never got out in the 90s yesterday. That's incredible. Um, so something's going on, something's going on. But I'm here to tell you I have some good, good news. Uh, we may have a little reprieve until they can figure out these scientists could figure out how we can uh, stop global warming. Of course, uh, we need to do what we need to do about preventing shit, sh crap going up into the atmosphere and uh, pollution and stuff. But here's something down the road which may save us. Now listen to this. The uh, Purdue University is uh, developing a uh, a lighter white paint. White paint. Uh, it is the whitest white paint ever. It's not glossy white where well, it's going to hurt your eyes and you got to look away. No, it's not that way. It's, it's whiter than white, though. And the... the uh, how did they make it so white? Well, they spread the they spread the light out over the paint. I don't know. I'm not a chemist. Don't ask me. But uh, apparently, they made it white. Now, the uh, the object of this is they figured out that if you use this white paint, you have to paint two percent of the world of the Earth with this white paint. For it to be effective. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to reflect the heat from the sun back into outer space. It sounds, it doesn't sound real, but this is all true. Um, the heat's going to come down. People are going to paint their roofs white with this special white paint. Uh, buildings and cities with, you know, without trees, uh, without shade. Everything's going to be painted white. I mean, they're even thinking about leaving the sidewalks. You know how the sidewalks get really hot during the summertime. You're going to see maybe more white sidewalks. Um, so the goal is that uh, all that hot air is going to go back into outer space. It's going to be deflected back in that. We're going to have a cooler atmosphere. Um I think that's a great idea. I think uh, if you really want to send the hot air out of the earth, just get a lot of these politicians together, shoot them up into space, and you're going to get rid of a lot of hot air that way. But uh, no, it's 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 true. This paint, though, won't be available for another year. They're still working on it. But uh, if I were you, I might invest in this white paint if you could get some stock in it because it sounds like 
this is going to be the way of the future. Um, people are going to get this white paint. They're going to paint their roofs. And uh, you're going to see a lot of white in the, in the, uh, on the earth. Now, the thing is, you know, since most of the earth is covered in, in water, in ocean, uh, you know, they're, they're going to need 2% of the earth with this white paint. So uh, they're going to have to distribute it to other countries or I don't know. But I'm uh, just giving you the, the heads up on this. That Purdue is uh, is developing this special paint uh, with uh, the hope that it's going to help us combat global warming. Now, this isn't the answer to uh, the problem, but it's going to help, and uh, it's going to help cool us down uh, somewhat until we can find an answer. It's better than nothing, right? So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to have to start saving my pennies and uh, buy some white paint and uh, paint the house. It's, and we'll, we'll be all, we'll be cool here. Not that we aren't cool anyway. I mean, cool, cool, you know. Anyway, so that's it for today. We had a nice little discussion, I think. And... Uh, I hope everybody has a good day. Now, don't forget, uh, subscribe or hit like or whatever is good, good. And uh, if you do that, and then, um, uh, you know, we'll stay on, on the air. I'll bring you some more interesting, funny stuff. And uh, we'll be chatting every day like we're usually chatting, you know. Maybe one day. I'll bring lunch, even though it's, well, it's in the morning. I don't know what time you watch the show. That's the good thing about YouTube, as uh, you can watch it any time, you know. You could uh, just, uh, watch me late at night. You could watch me in the morning. You could watch me any time you want. Uh, sit on the toilet, just uh, get your phone and uh, hit... Uh, the daily schmooze, and uh, you, know, you could just hear me just uh, talk. It's what I do best. Anyway, you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, and by the way, have a hot dog for me today, okay? But just mustard. Don't put any of that other crap on there, or else I'm going to be really pissed. Okay, see you next time, which will probably be tomorrow. Bye for now.